Hi, I'm Michael Wargo, team pilot with Precision Aerobatics. And today, we're going to go over a little supplemental uh, information for landing. And this is how to land a 3D plane properly. Um, the reason this is a separate issue is because they land a lot easier. They land a lot slower. And all of the instruction I've been giving about long approaches and things like that don't necessarily apply to this aircraft. Minus five minutes. Um, and I think there is a different technique to land them. So um, I'm going to kind of give you an idea of what I'm thinking and how long and how short you should, uh, should be with it and uh, go over some of the rules that this kind of breaks uh, with the rules I've set forth for all those other landing videos that I've given you. So let's take a look. All right, the one similarity is I, I do like to land on high rates. Remember, my expo is set properly, so uh, high rates are very docile for me. And when I'm coming in, um, as you can see, I, I'm going very slow. And I'm kind of sort of hurrying, but not, not really. But watch how slow the plane is going. Minus six minutes. And that whole concept means that I don't have to make a very long approach. You don't have to hit these targets. And you don't have to uh, you know, uh, bring the plane in with a long, shallow uh, slope. Um, as you can see, uh, this time I'm going to land with the wind because it's a little better for the sun. But as I'm coming in, uh, you don't have to go out very far. Just find the center of the runway and just let the plane almost land itself. Uh, I'm, I'm actually going to sh show you something here. I don't know, Tom, if you can get the... the I'm going to hold the radio up and watch how little, if nothing, I'm doing to give you an idea of just how easy this thing is to land. Just set the throttle. It's descending, and I'm going to do nothing. That plane just landed itself. It's really that simple. So the one thing that uh, uh, we talked about is, as far as we don't need that big of a, uh, an approach, just about anywhere, just point it at the runway, uh, tilt it towards the runway, and it'll land within, I don't know, 15, 20 feet. Um, now, the big deal is, no 3D plane uh, is created equally. So if you're flying something a little bit heavier, you know, extreme flight 3D hobby shops, they're all a bit heavier. Um, the uh, Katana 52 and the XR51 will land a little dif uh, differently than the Addiction X. But for the most part, these planes are super, super light. They're very uh, balanced, they're very neutrally balanced. So they're always going to come down really easily. So don't force it. If, the only way you can make a bad landing with this thing is to come in fast. Um, if I'm coming like this, a long, slow approach, or a long, fast approach like this, see how fast it's going? Well, technically, it, look, it just slowed down anyway. So, um, like I said, the only mistake you can make, I think, is if you're on asphalt or something, come in a little fast. But as long as you let the thing slow down, um, as you can see... Here, take a look at this, Tom. I'm literally going to show you how slow it will land. Look how slow it is. I mean, the rollout is only a couple of feet. Um, if I was inside of a gym, this thing would have no trouble getting, you know, landing and coming down on the ground. You've seen over the, the years with all my videos, you know, I've done all kind of crazy landings with this thing, and, and all those things are only possible because of how light it is. You know, when I go up and just kind of land straight down kind of thing, or land directly from, uh, from a Harrier or directly from a hover, all these things are possible because it's very light. Another reason it's a little easier to land and, uh, and so on is because because the thing is going so slow, if you're a little high when it happens and it plops down, the plane is very light, so it tends to do a lot less damage. So with everything involved, there's so little that can go wrong with landing a 3D plane as opposed to the others.